Hello, 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 hello there, folks. Marshall here, and bringing you a one versus one PA cast requested and sent in by Andreas G here. So, what have we got? It's a one versus one, as I say. Zipco making his way back into PA on the north spawn of frozen Oreo yogurt and blue. Air first. Air second. You what? You what? Don't make me say what is this game before the two minute mark, please. Scouts coming out, F fabs as well. Now on the south spawn, of course. You got Andreas G. Bots first, traditional meta. Looks like uh, S second. Indeed it is. P gens, P gens, F third, fourth vehicles. What? Why so much air? Well, I suppose it's frozen oil yogurt, so they need the air presence on this one. Of course, we've seen enough 2v2s on this map to know that air is a big thing, but... I might have even added in a second bot. Again, of course, air is going to be useful. Now, I've noticed because Zipco doing this a lot more is using fireflies and just planting them in your uh, perimeter. So if you're ever playing against uh, Kazipko, watch out for these little things. Watch out for these cheeky blighters, because... They sit there and they give him a whole load of vision. Let's have a look at what he's scouted. And he continues to see. He sees the air, he sees the bots, he sees the faber. Is he bringing over a bomber to try and deal with that faber? Maybe. Looks like it's just interceptors at the moment scouting for enemy air fabs. No bombers as of yet. Of course, he doesn't necessarily need to deal with that. Of course, moving the firefly the moment he sees interceptors going in that general direction. And there he sees the air second. So Fireflies can actually be a very, very valuable early game scout, and it's finally good to see people actually scouting early game rather than just relying on what they imagine the other player to be doing based on the meta. Of course, Kazipko mixing it up with the double air, finally going bots. I suspect maybe we might see Com reclaim. Yeah, Combat Fab straight out there. He knows he needs Com reclaim. He knows. Yeah, even Andreas. Getting a good firefly out there. Bear in mind that neither of these players have really been playing PA all that much recently, so they could be a little bit rusty, but all the same, they were top players previously, however. Lots and lots of air fans grabbing all the necessary expansion metal from Kazipko. Stalling on metal just the smidgen. Air fab survives. Interceptors with good, good support there. Docs, of course, can be sent through water. They're amphibious. And they can hop over and raid a bit of Kazipko's base that isn't really expanding in the local metal, rather it's going to the rather distant metal broad. Andreas, however, preferring to grab all of his base metal before maybe playing the more risky game of the far expansions. Perhaps he thinks, well, these metal are guaranteed. So... I can play it safe, build up, and then start pushing out. There's no need to play risky when I can get just as much metal in my base and keep my fabers. Equally, Kazipko may be thinking, well, maybe he's banking on the fact that I may be thinking like that, and so I'm going to go and expand as far and wide as possible. Of course, that does not pay off necessarily if you don't manage to keep up the air. Hence the double air first on a big map such as Frozen Yogurt. It has to be noted, of course, it might not work on smaller maps, but Kazipko is Kazipko, and he may make it work. We'll just have to see if such a replay exists. If it does, be happy to send it in, and I'll cast it. I was coming out, of course. I don't want those docks left around there. He wants to try and re-expand. Of course, doing that raiding hasn't really bumped Kazipko down all that much. Of course, Kazipko is com reclaiming, and is Andreas? I don't know if he is. Andreas is not com reclaiming. Huh! So here, actually, Andreas has a better economy than Kazipko, insofar as it's more reliable, more long term. And it's not sacrificing commander health. What else we got from Kazipko, though? T2 Air Rush. What? Okay. Phoenix and Kestrels, it is. No T2 yet from Andreas. Has he queued it up yet? No. 
I suspect it'll be T2 bots rather than vehicles. And I almost half expect to see some naval starting to show itself soon. So it's taking down the uh, aggressive docks there. There we go, there's the naval. Might even get some T2 naval. Of course, a dock builder, not a dock, so a bot farmer building a naval factory. It's going to take a while. But, you know, such things happen. What was that? I think that was a bunch of interceptors chain trading trading blows. And the T2 air is up. Kestrel's coming out. Bombers there as well. Not huge numbers of interceptors at this point. In comes Andreas for another quick cheeky peek at the base. Does he see the T2 air? He sees it. He sees the T2 air. There we go. So now he knows that that's a thing. He knows that Kestrels are something to be worried about. We might even see him throw up a couple of extra air factories here to make sure that he maintains. Yep, there they are. Insta double air factory to make sure that he maintains the air superiority dominance there. Because currently I'd say he's on top of it. He's got the interceptor count. Gazipco is being very, very cautious about where he sends his bombers and gunships. And Andreas starting to pick off all of Kazipko's now uh, distant expansion that he can't necessarily defend going into the next part of this game. And that's possibly one of the reasons why not to expand quite so fast. Certainly if you're not going to lock them down with defences or factories or whatever going into the uh, later stages of a game. Of course with the naval coming out from Andreas that's going to start threatening Kazipko as well. Again, interceptors though. Ah! Quite what happened there by rights. I reckon Andreas should have won that. So something has changed. We've got some Phoenix in there now. That's going to really help Kazipko keep his air superiority. Come down here, see the air factory. Maybe pick off a few fabs. He will. Flies over Galata first, however, losing his gunships for it. And he could have gone and killed off some fabs. He goes and sees them, though. In comes another Kestrel, just ready to pick off that fab, however. More air from Andreas, though, ready to come in and trade blows. We go down go the Kestrels and the Phoenix there, not really pulling their weight. More Kestrels dying. I think Kazipko needs more air factories. He's not really building them. He's kind of struggling to find his output for his resources. He's floating metal a little bit now. Not so, considering he started building with his calm. Now you see, this is the thing of going T2 air when you don't have air superiority. You can't then get up your T2 economy, and so you're then running a T2 factory on T1 economy, and if you've got your risky expansions such as he does, it's not necessarily going to be the most reliable thing to keep running. Of course, he's now got a T2 bot, so he can start getting up his T2 eco and supporting more factories going forward, which is good. And just pushing up a little bit, not necessarily doing so successfully, trying to get some turrets up there. Kazipko locking those down really, really nicely indeed. Kazipko really playing well with the air that he has. He's really hitting where necessary. All Andreas is doing at the moment is trying to raid expansions, doing so successfully in some places, as we can see why his docks are around the place. I think he might have picked off a cut. No, there's a docks. Um, and he's also trying to keep on top of the air game to the best of his ability. Of course, with his dock standing sentry, he will kind of keep Kazipko located and pinned down. But once Kazipko really starts to get this T2 underway, it's not going to necessarily be the most reliable and efficacious thing going forward. Phoenix coming out, getting a bit of scouting. Now, this is the thing with Kazipko and his Phoenix. He kind of sends them on their own. I mean, I have kind of said the need for more interceptors so that he can really get back into the A game because 
Phoenix, when they're outnumbered by hummingbirds, will not pay back their metal costs, which is not good news, of course. Sitting your air over docks to allow them to get picked off is also not the best use of your air force there. Kestrels! Doing the little pick-offs, though. Oh dear, flying over a narwhal on the uh, on the path out. Kestrel's actually taking quite a nice beating from those narwhals. That surprises me how well they take those shots. In comes Andreas G, though, with a superior hummingbird force, really forcing Kazipko on the defensive again, running away, high turning it in. Kazipko turning around with the Phoenix, keeping it alive, really... Wow. I would have given that to Andreas, but I think the Phoenix might have toppled it. Locusts coming out as well. Those are going to be threatening to Andreas if he can't lock down his approaches. What it's going to take is a couple of locusts coming in, and they will chew through the rest. There's enough docks kind of loitering around that they're not necessarily going to do the most. Spinners focusing down the Kestrels, though. Getting killed there for their trouble. Lobstrats? Really? You're going lobs now? Lobs are a cheesy early game strat. Bot factories are a sensible man's mid-late game build because of their cost efficiency compared to lobs. What are you doing, Kazipko? And a second effort! <sighs> okay, let's just wait for it to happen. Locusts can come in and kill off these narwhals, though. Nice. Juicy. Of course, they will meet continued narwhal resistance, which happens to fire over them. Not great. Lucas <laughs> trying to micro around the narwhal shots there. Coming in, though. Choo, choo, choo. Through that hull armor. Andrew still with his air force, not quite managing to break through. Because Ipko, because Ipko microing his air really, really well. It seems as though the hummingbirds are angering on the... Kestrels, which are really tanking the shots really, really nicely. Locusts, I don't think they really paid for themselves there. I really don't. He's got some more, of course, and he will continue to have more. What's Andreas doing in terms of his air factory count there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow. Okay. He's got plenty, and he's going T2 as well. He perhaps realizes Phoenix are a thing that he needs. And starting to push in on the ground as best that he can. Still with such small forces that it's not really going to be effective any longer, nor costly. Because the thing is, Kazipka has T2 bots now, and he has a ground army, so Andreas really needs to move out of raiding parties to assault forces. And he's not quite got to that consistency yet. In terms of his unit numbers or composition. He needs levelers, perhaps. If he wants to make those sort of slow pushes over time. Kazipko here, though, with these slammers. These could be quite devastating if they push in here against these air factories. Plus, it has to be noted, there's a commander there sat on his own. In can come, though. Are they going to go through the water? They can, of course, and slammers can fire in the water. Docks, however, cannot. In they go. Submerged. Let's have a look. Down go the mechs. Will Andreas G's commander hightail it out? In comes the air. You see there's something wrong. How's he going to deal with this? He doesn't have the bombers. All he can hope for are maybe a good few uber cannons. Commander's still sat there. Like nothing's wrong. Down come these air factories. This is potentially going to be really quite painful for Andreas. How is he going to deal with this? He has a phoenix. It's not really going to do the job. He's got levelers coming in. He's got levelers coming in. That should be okay as long as he can keep the leveler alive. 
Lemmers can fire, of course, from quite a good range. They need to focus down those slammers. Those are what's doing the damage right now. Another air factory goes down. Level is stuck behind some wreckage right now. Not therefore hitting slammers. Pops out and around. Leveler goes down to the slammer fire. That's not good at all. One slammer still remains. He can be microed around and just maybe back off. But the bombers come in and they will mop that up. Because Ipko leaves it to die. But he comes in with locusts. He's ready for another pass. At this assault. And equally, in the picture in picture there, we can see some levelers pushing into Kazipko's base. What's going on there? Actually, I think that's going to be a more important assault to keep track of. Can Andreas do the anti-air damage here to these Kestrels in time before the levels are picked off? It looks as though those locusts ran away somewhere. Where did they go? They either ran away or got killed. One or t'other. The air for Andreas G now, though. The fact that he's got into T2Air and can now contest Kazipko's air defence is key. Zipko still being very, very defensive, remarkably so. And just even sending narwhals into raid here. Not something you usually see, but because of the air defense of Kazipko, he's trying to make it as costly for Kazipko to answer these raids as possible. In comes the commander instead, though. That's a good answer for it. Down goes that. Is T2 naval a thing? It is. Obviously, Kaiju is most likely. Oh my god, so much T2 air from Kazipko, so much so that he's stalling his eco here. Locusts into a vehicle force. Ooh, kills off the storm just before the air force goes over it. Good timing there. In comes Andreas G, though, with another air force. More and more Phoenix as time goes on. I think Andreas might have this one because of those Phoenix. They're really going to tip the scales in this battle here. And Andreas has secured air dominance once again. This is a problem for Kazipko, who is lacking the ground army right now. He doesn't have T2 vehicles. He's playing very defensively with his air game. And his locusts aren't necessarily chomping down, as it were. Try as they might, lo uh, docks are not an ideal meal for a locust. They get a little bit of indigestion. There. Kestrel's coming in. They'll try and do what they can. Maybe he's just building them up a little bit. I think I th almost have a feeling that he's got too high a ratio of Kestrels now. He needs to win air dominance back, and Kestrels aren't going to do that. Kestrels are good for doing a bunch of raiding, but not, as you can see there, for winning air dominance back. Andreas maintaining it. And that is very, very troubling news for Gazepko, especially since the T2 Naval is up and running. And just really commanding this game now. More and more T2 factories keep springing up. They keep being queued up there. More vehicle factories. Andreas still not stalling. He's claimed the Southern Hemisphere, pushing his front lines forward, really, really blockading Kazipko now. Kazipko struggling to keep his expansions going forward, considering he's lost air superiority, and just knows exactly what's going on all the time. I think... Surprise, surprise, as it might be. It's looking as though Kazipko's cheese strats have failed him. Oh no. That he might kick up a stink, of course. As a result of that. <laughs> That's a massive investment on the defence of that position there. I think he's dead, folks. You can, you can, you can stop firing now. I think he's dead. Anyway, 
moving around. What do we got? Endgame strats. Andreas needs to push more air trades here. Will Andreas lose this one? He decides not to push in. Yes, Kazipko comes back with the Phoenix in full force. Andreas getting pushed back a little bit here. But will it really make a difference? Because Kazipko's air dominance now doesn't necessarily mean much. Because he can't actually do damage to the ground or Andreas' eco with it. Now he sees the T2 naval there. And there's Barracuda submarines. So here we can see air dominance that doesn't really command any form of respect because it's not even necessary at this point. It's almost obsoleted by the uh, amount of anti-air that Andreas has managed to build up as Kazipka is playing so defensively this game. The strats did not pay off for him whatsoever. Perhaps early game when he managed to get the rush to T2, but he didn't really do enough damage with it. We see a few docks in the base there, but again, they're going to meet levelers and slammers and get chewed up. Cheeky air fabs. What is going on there? Right. Again, we'll have another air engagement. And again, Andreas will lose this one. Unless Kazipko is kited for days. Oh dear, the Phoenix. Kited, kited, kited. Inadvertent guard radius kiting is not nice. Kaiju's out and about. In the seas. Something's stopped happening. There's the air trade. Over the comp. Kazipko winning again, but it just comes back to that not being able to do anything with it now. Yeah, you've won the air superiority. What now, Kazipko? Kestrels aren't doing anything for you. And Andreas... Did I see he was building colonels? I don't think I did. Yes, I did. Colonels. So I'll push with these and creep forwards with anti-air, no doubt. That would be a good move for him. Equally, you can just put up some torpedo launchers on the land here and really threaten this commander off into the uh, firing line of docks and slammers. And you can see there a massively superior eco of Andreas. Kazipko just desperately holding on, but it's not going to do him any good going forward. Too defensive early game. The air reliance failed him. To too great an extent. And, uh... His ground force was subpar. Sub par. Very much so. And there's the GG. Well played to Andreas there. Locking down his starting mechs and pushing forwards. Realizing what he needed to do to keep Kazipko from rolling out of control and executing it. Took him time and a good few poor trades. But he got there, and Kazipko, on the other hand, failed to adapt. He got too tunnel visioned into the air game. Well played to both players, and just takes the victory. Hope you enjoyed, folks. Let me know what you think of this game in the comments, or any uh, particular games that you might like to see in terms of formats or other games, of course. Uh, we'll probably have a few more PA videos coming soon. So then, folks, I've been Marshall. Hope you enjoyed, and have a nice day.